flag leading to order. Can everybody rise for the flag salute? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to which the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, this meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Law. This meeting, November 6th, was included in the list of meetings notice sent to the 110 Democrat Courier News on January 5th, 2023. Posted on the bulletin board at Borough Hall on that date and has remained continuously posted as required. In addition, a copy of this notice is and has been available to the public and is all filed in the office of the Borough Clerk. Can I have a roll call, please, Carla? Sure. Uh, Councilman Johnson is uh, absent. Councilman um, Parker? Here. Councilwoman Rossetti? Here. Councilwoman Engelhart? Here. Council Vice President Tilling? Here. Council President Long? Here. And Mayor? Here. I have to have a public, a public um, commentary now versus later. What do you mean? Um, I don't know. I was always said in the beginning of the meeting and then the closed in the executive session. But okay. Um, so our first order of business is an executive session. Uh, it is under Senate Bill 5215. Uh, negotiation for Liberty Village. So, uh, can I have a motion to go into executive? Well move. Is there a second? Angle Hartle, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I, I can't vote. Susan voted. I need one more. Two more. Right. One. Thank you. Zoom. Back in our open session, um, we have a presentation before we get into regular business. Uh, we have um, Police Fratella. Police Chief Patella and Officer Zitko uh, discussing the, the, the canine. You can go ahead. Okay. Uh, so that people can see you on screen. I don't know why that screen's not working. Where's the The screen's not working. Yeah, just, just, keep going. just talk. Just talk. Actually, if you come up, you can come up here. If you just come like, Right, right over here. There you, there, there, you you there you go. 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 There with this donation for the canine, Greg came to me a couple of weeks ago and- Can you, I'm sorry, Liz, can you hear him or is it just me? Yeah, I, I can hear him. <clears throat> a little can tired of how they flight. Behind him? Does it work? Yeah, press the button. Fine. Can hold it on the camera if you come sing us a song. You don't want to? It work. It's gonna go better. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hold on, I can Great. Uh, so Greg came to me a few weeks ago uh, with concerns for Jax. Um, Jax has been used for half of the service that he's able to be used for in the fact that um, with the legalization of marijuana, he can no longer do drug sniffs. Um, so Jack had, Jax had two purposes. He was a, a drug dog and a patrol dog. Uh, patrol dog was... Uh, went out, searched for people, article recovery, uh, uh, bites, if uh, with a, some sort of aggression or something like that, Jack, that Greg would release Jax. Um, but with Jax not being able to do the drug work anymore, and with his age, he's approximately 10 years old, um, he was having some teeth issues and some other issues to where uh, he just lost motivation to come in. You know, animals have emotions and, and want to serve a purpose as well. Um, Jax wanted to stay home and spend more time with uh, Greg and uh, his wife and kids. So uh, he said, I would like to do another canine. And, uh, you know, th this would make uh, three work dogs and one personal dog in Greg's house. I asked him for sure if that's what he wanted. Uh, he spoke with his family. Uh, it's something that they wanted to do. So he went and spoke with Corporal Rivick who had a uh, contact of someone who would uh, sponsor or pay for the dog. Um, the dog's uh, price right now is 11,500. So it's a significant amount of money. Um, so we met with uh, Dr. DePaco, DePaco um, and he agreed to sponsor the dog. 
uh, that's when we were speaking with you guys. Uh, Greg and the lieutenant went out to look at a few dogs, and that's when we came across uh, canine Elsa. Um, she, uh, I can have Greg talk to you a little bit about her, but basically um, our purpose with her will be uh, we're switching from the narcotics since we have Peter already, and we're going to do an explosive dog. Uh, it's something that we've uh, been lacking, and it's been hard to get a, a, a bomb dog to our events, uh, and just a, a regular with the way the world's changing, and with mass gatherings and people and everything, we just figure it's nice to have that option. So Elza will be a, an explosive uh, bomb dog, along with the patrol dog. Will so, she be able to smell um, arms besides bombs? And firearms? Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, specifically gunpowder. Okay. So it's one of the things that they are trained on. Okay. And I, I asked you this privately, but I'm going to ask you publicly. Sure. Um, we have no obligation to share this dog with any other county no or municipality. And um, if we so choose to, we could set up a fee schedule to yes. go and you know, do the fairgrounds or do the whatever for the county or for local governments. Yeah, um, I, I think what an appropriate thing would be, um, we have to define emergent, you know, if something came along that was emergent that affected the borough of Bloomington, you know, Greg would be utilized for, as opposed to if there was an, uh, we'll use the county in the fair, they come to us and say, hey, you know, August, 24th to the 28th, we'd like you to do that. Well, that's a that's a pre scheduled thing. That's something we can negotiate. Right. Because where we're where we're losing is uh, Officer Zinko's time and efforts. Because um, that's not. Well, one of my concerns is when I was a freeholder, um, there was a program in the state, and they would give they would give the county a dog, but the deal was that at any time, if any county needed uh, okay. the dog, you, you had to send your officer. And they had to go to Union or Hudson, you know, Hoboken, Newark, yeah, uh, yeah. and that was a constant. And we turned it down, yeah, we, turned the program down. With, uh, with this style, um, we were very proactive with the, the narcotics end of it because honestly, there would be uh, some forfeiture and we would get some funding for that. We're not going to get anything for a bond, you know, what are we going to get? So we have to we have to think smarter and move forward in that direction. I agree with you. Um, the dog itself will not cost the county any money. Um, we have uh, vet care and food uh, set up. I think there's not really much else that's now. All on every continued funding that we've had for both our dogs um, is continuing with our the new dog. All donated. Yes, yeah. the equipment's already in place with with Jacks. There's some specialty things with with the vehicle that Greg can go into later. Um, but we have all that in place, you know, it's basically a new collar, maybe a new leash. And, uh, so the council, the council is being asked to approve the donation tonight. And then what, what's your timetable to um, get the dog trained, swear her in as an officer, um, say a public thank you to Dr. Paco? We're, we're probably, um, our, our window of time is by the end of this month, we're going to have a uh, scheduled walkout for Jack's. For his retirement, uh, Greg has uh, said he wanted to retain Jax as a as a personal pet. <laughs> I approve that. See, seeking your approval that I would keep Jax, um, and then we will have a, a swearing in for uh, for the new for the new pup, and uh, Greg will start his training in December. Um, it's a program that's going to work within his scheduling. Uh, right now, it's just Greg and another canine from another yeah. agency yeah. um so that it's it's pretty just the two of them it's three people setting up the time and, and to meet the uh, the requirements and the agenda for the dog so that'll start in december so we'll probably do it pretty rapidly so somewhere in the beginning funny thing is i just looked at jacks jacks was sworn in december 2nd so we'll probably be close somewhere in the same window mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. oh. So yeah, and you're absolutely right. That's exactly what we're seeking. We're seeking the approval, the acceptance of the donation to turn that over to the kennel and move forward with the program. Anybody have any questions or comments for the I have a quick question just because I'm a little naive on the process. Uh, keto right now is narcotics trained, right? Correct. 
And do they and and also patrol or is it just uh, narcotics? He, he is just narcotics because of the uh, uh, Greg probably can't be careful. I'll just say it simply because she's a she's a lab. She's mm -hmm. a she's a she's a single core um, targeted. What they call it? It's a, it's a single purpose. Uh, that you know, that's the word. Okay. I get it. I get it. And but Jax was both a patrol and narcotics, but but he was trained for for cannabis as well, and so he can't Correct. essentially do that job yeah. anymore. But but he's getting well, the deserves to retire Correct. anyway. Correct. So it kind of worked out timing wise. Everything everything yeah. happens for a reason. Wow, well, that's like so you. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thank you. I just I didn't. Somewhere. I wanted to understand that. I yep. Thank you. Um, Council. Is that your council vice president? Anything? Council I I have a question. So is the missing person search part of your regular patrol search or is that a specialty? That's part of uh uh that'd be part of her normal training if Greg okay. was all for um for missing persons, um she'd be utilized for that. Okay. And then is there any monetary um, responsibility on the borough, Greg, once you take Jax as a personal pet? I mean, do you, no, would the, you need any, does he need any, anything going out that would cost the borough any money? No, Jax, Jax, um, Greg would uh, financially support uh, Jax's eating habits. Uh, <laughs> and, and I believe the, uh, the, the, the veterinarian has graciously uh, gave Jack's lifetime health care. We'll take care of Jack's medical needs. Oh, that's um, fantastic. You, that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah, it's a it's a thank you for Jack's mm -hmm. service. And so they've been huge. a yeah. part of Jack's. You know, stocking that, it's the amount of, amount of uh, you know, some surgeries these dogs had, stitches, yeah. especially their work. I couldn't put a dollar amount on <laughs> the care they've given us for free. Mm -hmm. Great time. Great time. Yeah, we're very lucky. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, it's under a regular uh, agenda, so want to hang out. Should be getting there pretty, pretty fast, maybe. Um, okay. Um, is Bill Hans on by any chance? To Bill Hans. Such a good stuff. Yeah, there he is. You want to like let him in? Bill wants to participate. Yep. Okay. So um, under mayor's report, um, I just want to note for the public that we will most likely be having a special meeting on December 6th at 6 p.m. Um, for two purposes. One is to have a public hearing, which is required um, for uh, resolution 2023-195, which is number five under the regular agenda, which is um, a New Jersey Department of Community Affairs grant. They require a pretty rough ten table that includes a public hearing. So um, uh, that is currently being uh, tentatively scheduled. Bill Hans, our CFO, has already acknowledged that he can make it that night. And the other is um, we're hoping that uh, we will have a public um, presentation by the redeveloper of Liberty Village to go through uh, all of the amendments that have been done to the Liberty Village site plan. Um, mostly due to stormwater regs changing and really um, having a major impact on his site plan. So we're hoping that will happen on December 6th. Uh, so we are letting the public know that well in advance. Um, you know, I don't want people saying we're doing something at the last minute. This is following a very tight timetable uh, to try to get him through early next year, the planning board process and all of the redevelopment agreements that have to be done. Um, so by law, uh, we have to have a conversation acknowledging that our CFO, um, the town has reviewed to, to check boxes to see where we are on best practices. Bill, do you want to like um, just say a couple of hello, a couple of words about <laughs> that? You did all the work. You should get all the credit and how we scored so the public knows. Yes, Mayor. So there were, um, I think it's 64 questions with multiple parts. Some are not scored. Some are just, they're just trying to get uh, 
an idea of what towns do, such as uh, things with garbage and recycling and lead remediation. Um, but a lot of them, the questions have to do with uh, how we do the budget process. Um, a lot of them are now cybersecurity. Uh, they're getting pretty uh, interested in that, you know, just because of what the the costs for insurance are with that nowadays. Um, but in total, uh, we scored a 38 and um, basically you needed a 29 or higher to make sure that you didn't have any of your state aid withheld. So we were, you know, fine with that. But we could do better, definitely. And, you know, you mentioned the magic words of cybersecurity, and Bill did send out an email to every elected official, uh, as well as anybody else in the borough who's got a government-issued computer uh, or email address to do cybersecurity training. I have not done it. I will admit that publicly, but I will also announce when I do it, and I hope that everybody else on council and everybody else has done it. And Bill is tracking, and it is really critical that we get all trained in this. Um, because it, it is a bad new world out there regarding that. But um, thank you for doing doing the, we, we, there's no vote in this. We just have to have the discussion. So Bill could check that box uh, that we did discuss it. And, um, you know, we, we scored great, um, but I know that there's places where we can probably um, keep working and do even better. Um, these are best practices that the state uh, determines that, you know, it's about transparency, it's about good budgeting practices, it's about um, just government operations in general. And um, so I appreciate your time, Bill, on that. Does anybody have any questions for Bill? What's the highest score you can get? Because I didn't hear it. 64. Yeah, 30 out of what? 64. Uh well, 64 is the total amount of questions, but a number of them were not uh, scored. Um, I'd, I'd have to count how many actually were scored. I'm not sure. I mean, there were only, I'm thinking uh, there were only probably like two or three maybe that we said no to. Really? Or an A. Yeah, there weren't that many. Like 41 or 42 and we scored a 38. That's right. I'll, I'll get the, the exact number. I'll let you know. Yeah, that's that is. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was sixty four points, Bill. So that's great. If it's if we only said no to a couple of things, it's very good. Anything else? Well, we got gotcha? you. You're going to stay on for the grant, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Bill. Um, Thank you. Uh, pretty much my entire report. Just reminding everybody to do that cybersecurity training too. Um, council members' reports. Um, council President Long. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, I don't have any uh, court report tonight. And um, as far as the police department, we've already heard from the chief and uh, Officer Zitko about the new police dog. Um, I have a meeting lined up with the prosecutor's office to discuss this Arrive Together program, which um, there was a press release, I believe, last week. And basically, um, what that acronym stands for, Arrive, is Ultimate Responses to Reduce instances of violence and escalation it has to do with mental health calls versus, you know, sending a, just an officer there. Um, and I didn't ask you. Um, so I, I saw that I was curious about it and, and I'll kind of have, have some things to report back to everybody once I learn more about it, but it seems like it's a, it's a good step in the right direction. Uh, you know, in this in this nation and in, in our state, you know, we've, we've had so much to do with mental health and the responses to those crises versus, you know, legitimate, you know, police presence is required. So I'm curious to see what that's all about. Um, and then the other thing is I just have is uh, I'm going to be making myself available on Saturday afternoons um, from 1230 to 130 roughly uh, location to be determined. But I want to, I've been kind of writing on a sub stack about, you know, kind of trying to uh, pull people together, get people talking, um, sharing in a dialogue. Um, my, my goal with this, if I can speak to as many people as possible, is 
to kind of see if we can build a shared vision of Flemington's future. We've got a lot going on here. I'm curious to know what people are thinking, what residents are thinking. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts, feedback, visions, yourself, whatever you think. Um, so you can email me at jlong at historicflemington.com or call or text me at 609-608-2763. And uh, yeah, I'm open, available, and uh, would like to have a conversation. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Council Vice President Tilly. Yeah, I've been under the weather all day. I don't have anything this week. I'll catch up with you next meeting. Okay, for better. Uh, Councilman Rossetti. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Only I just have a quick reminder: there is a Shade Tree Commission meeting uh, this Wednesday, November eighth, seven p.m. Hybrid, both in town hall and virtual. That's all I've got for tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman Johnson. Hi, Mayor. Thank you. Nothing new to report this week. Councilwoman Engelhart. Um, I just want to report on the schools that I attended a uh, emergency uh, uh, Flemington American School District Board of Education meeting on um, Friday, the, um, the last Friday, whatever the date is, at five o'clock. Um, there was no action taken, but um, the Board of Education was in executive session for three and a half hours and i sat through all of it so next time we have a long executive session we cannot complain what's the notice topic um the notice topic was um uh two items of related to discussing of um a, a, a lawsuit um that was a potential lawsuit not not definite um and um contract negotiations that's all that the that the um subject matter said and that's all that was um said after executive session so um we're honestly not sure what the subject was but the next regular meeting for the Flemington Raritan School District um board of ed meeting is November 13th at 7 p.m. so that might be something that people might be interested in going to the next high school district board of ed meeting is November 20th at 7 p.m. And um, and that's all I have um, for my report this week. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry. I am um, I am attending the um, regular meeting uh, this Thursday for the board of the um, uh, museum house. And they um, were really happy to participate in trick-or-treating this year on Fidel Street. That was one of their goals. And they were felt like they were kind of this dark house along of active street last year. So they were really happy to participate and be one of the, you know, residential houses on the block like everyone else. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Calvin and Parker. So a couple of things. So um, I am moving forward with um, putting to working with NAACP on Black History Month here in the borough. Um, we actually are in, in Pulling together a luncheon with um, the people who are at the um, African American Museum in Montgomery, Lane, and Beverly. And also, it looks like that we may be getting someone from the African American Museum who, who is was instrumental in building and getting the funding for the African American Museum in Washington, D.C. So they, a team of them, and they may even be hoping to get money as well. But um, we, we want it to be really inclusive, so we're actually reaching out to the Asian Indian community as well as the Latino community to get them all involved. Um, and so I'm, I'm really spending a lot of time on that because I think this is just so important, and I'll tell you why I think this is important. So I had a conversation with a couple of people recently. This is just very disheartening. I'm still struggling with this. And they said to me, and these are people of color who said to me, I don't feel comfortable with walking down the street on Main Street in Flemington. That to me just stabbed me in my heart. I, I, I'm getting emotional about it right now. Because if nothing else, and I have been preaching this and preaching this and preaching this, we have got to be an inclusive community. This bullshit has got to stop. I don't feel comfortable. When someone tells me they don't feel comfortable walking down the street, that means that you don't want them here. And that just can't be. I will not live in a town like that. I will not. This is not going to happen. And I don't care. Jeremy, if you're going to have a session, 
who are you inviting to those sessions and what are you doing? Anybody who wants no, no, you've got to reach out to people. It's not anybody who wants to talk. You got to reach out to people. You got to tell people I'm here. You got to tell people I want to hear from you. You got to knock on doors. You got to go into grocery stores. You got to go into stores. That's our responsibility as council people. And this, as we sit here, that is what we ran for. That's what we ran on. And we are not doing that. Other than myself, I don't know anybody else who's doing that. So uh, this is very, very upsetting to me. So I have to put that out there because. This is going to stop, and I think that these things that we're going to have is very, very important that we do those things. It's very important that we make people feel that they're a part of this community. And I've been preaching that since the day I've set on this council, and this is going to happen. It's going to happen. The next thing I want to just talk about briefly is I am working on the newsletter. I mean, I did get, for those people who got it in, thank you. But it's very, very disturbing that I didn't hear from everybody. Is very, very disturbing. The council people, you guys said, yes, we need this. Yes, I want to do this. And not everybody's participating or having their people, the committees that they sit on. Listen, I sit here and listen to you guys. I've attended this meeting, I've attended this meeting, but there's no outcome. I don't know what you're doing on the meetings because there's no outcome. And nobody else knows what you're doing on the meeting. And that's the purpose of the newsletter. If you're not going to talk about it in the council, at least put it in writing so that people know what's going on. So, I am not happy about the outcome of that, and I'm very disappointed because at the very least, we owe our constituents, all of us, everybody owes this to, to our constituents, is to tell them what's going on. What are we working on? What we need to look out for? What's coming up? And that's not happening. And I feel very, very, I mean, everybody keeps telling me they want to use other guess it's going to happen, but nobody is participating in it. And I think that's pretty sad. That's my no. Thank you. Um, you got the tax. You got the tax assessor thing also, right? On the, the newsletter on the rebates, the rebatements, right? Or Sorry. that's you too. Sorry. The tax assessor's report on the abatements. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Yes, okay. yes. So I did get that from Ed. And the other thing, um, Marsha, that we have to work on is that there is such a disjoint thing, thing going on. I think we talked about this at last council meeting and. I would like to put together a meeting with the fire department and FCP and the tax and zoning and a whole bit because it's, I'm looking at these notes that even um, um, Maureen said, and it's so broken and we've got to fix this. There's no reason why we can't fix this. It's just a matter of getting all the departments together, mapping out what should happen, and then coming up with a process to put it in. I believe there are processes. I just don't believe that everybody's connected on the process. So you're doing one thing, this person's doing another thing, and it's taking people a lot of time to get through the process. For instance, on signage, I know some people are still waiting to get through the process on signage. I know some people are waiting to get process on zone. You know, I mean, I'm just hearing this from, from business owners and I'm hearing that it's, it's, it's just broken. It's just broken, that's all. But the other part of it is, is that there are businesses that are opening up in town that nobody knows about. And then, like nobody knows yeah, about well, it. How does that right. happen? You know, th that's just not right. That means that we're losing revenue. You know, the well, that, well, revenue. That, well, the police, the, 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 fire, the fire chief, uh, fire marshal reported yeah. to us about that. Well, we have two businesses that just opened right. up and just, just arbitrarily opened up and nobody knew anything about it. Yeah. That's why I mean the system is broken and we need to fix the system so. I will put myself out there and I will be more than happy, more than happy to call a meeting with everybody and we just meet and map it all out and then we can present it to, to you and then get input from the council. You know, something that this. Councilwoman Engelhart's very interested in working on with, you know, get the planning board process because this, there's a science committee there and, oh, it's you know, and, and our, and our yep. construction office won't move yep. things forward unless certain sign-offs happen. Yep. So I think... Um, I'm, I'm looking at the emails now and going, like, this is, I'm waiting for this, this didn't happen, this didn't happen. So yes, I will, I will, I will take charge. I will, take we'll, it. We'll, um, I will lead it. We'll work on something to okay. get people together. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we have uh, public comment session number one. <laughs> um, if anybody from the public has any comments, uh, limit to three minutes. Okay. Let me see your name and your address. Do I come up front? Uh, yeah, uh, use that microphone if you wouldn't mind. Sure. 
or people online are having trouble hearing. If you don't use the microphones. Good evening, Michael Scott, Jake uh, from Center for Educational, Center for Educational Advancement on Minneapolis Road. I was unable to make the meeting earlier in uh, in October. I just want to come out and uh, thank the uh, the uh, mayor, of course, and the rest of the council for the uh, approval of the uh, street plan for Thanksgiving morning. To invite you to come out and join, hopefully, thousands of people, and uh, and then have a uh, good good kick off to the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. I also want to thank Chief Hotel and his uh, uh, for the uh, police team. Did, uh, did a lot of a lot of uh, work helping us figure out a safe way to get around the town with the uh, the ongoing construction and the, uh, the paving uh, uh, situation, uh, particularly on New York Avenue and Broad Street. Which, uh, Is that, we have ongoing construction in town. Oh, no. yeah, <laughs> you know, well, there's a little bit. Races, really? Sort of, kind of. I arranged that just so that they would run in front of my house. Uh, okay. <laughs> I would also like to invite you or your representative uh, from the council or wherever to, uh, to maybe say hello to the other folks who come out on Thanksgiving morning. That is so and, uh, early. Yes. I know. So, uh, we start at six, but you can't join us. No. <laughs> Thank you for asking, though, but I'm so honest about that. Um, when you're done with the race, I think that um, some of us on the council would like to have like a debriefing conversation about what worked, what didn't work. Of course. How, how um, would you like to uh, do that? Well, um, we'll just reach out to you and, okay. and set up a meeting and just sit down and chat. I would typically come out uh, you know, shortly after the event in early December, maybe just like that, that's okay. Break. That's fine. A lot of things are fresh. That'd be great. Okay, cool. I don't know Absolutely. if it's ever happened before, but I like to I like to check up on big events. Aside from the thank you and your few comments and your observations, uh, nothing of any kind of formal nature, but certainly. Oh, be very informal. You know, just an informal conversation like what worked, what didn't work, how can we make it better? Uh, do we really need to pave all our streets, or can the race continue down our street? So <laughs> no, no, we got to we got to work that. I think okay. we do all right without too many people falling in the hole. Yeah, right. That would be bad. So, um, any comments or questions for? I'm I'm good. I'm, I'm look, good. Good luck with your with the race. Um, uh, and the hope it's a, a very successful fundraiser for you. Um, looking forward to hearing you know that the numbers are even better than last year. And yeah, I, I'm definitely interested in meeting with you and kind of maybe planning um, for the future and, and maybe how we, you know, we can, we can kind of work together sure, of course. Um, like even better in the future. Not a problem. Okay. I have a question. What's yes. your name again? I'm sorry. Michael Scotty. You'll need that spelled, right? The last name, yes. <laughs> S-K-O-C-Z-E-K. Wow, I wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you always make guess usually. <laughs> Dan, once again, thank you for this event. Um, I've been running in it since I can't remember 2010 or maybe before that. Yeah, yeah my summer's supposed to be 31st year, so uh, oh, well, got a ways to go. But he yeah. doesn't run the costume. I mean, but uh, I wear a turkey hat. Yeah, I've got a turkey on my head. Um, <laughs> my son will be running with me, so I got, I got him the Last year he rolled his ankle, so he couldn't. Right. Must have been that speed. But he's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't say which. That, that's yeah. something we're going to talk about. Okay. <laughs> um, my, my son actually was the winner last year. So unfortunately, he won't be uh, defending his title. But um, because he's got a, another race that he's obligated to. But um, he definitely sends his regards and Excellent. wishes everybody the uh, everybody uh, good luck. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank and you so much. Yeah, sure, it's every weekend too. Okay, thank you. Thanksgiving. What time do you want me there if that I'm not showing up? If you're not going to be showing up, don't show up about 9.20 near. What, what, it depends on if the uh, the courthouse steps are fixed. They should be. They should be. Then the, then the DJ is expected to be up on top, as is typical. If they are not quite yet ready, uh, the expectation is to be down about 30, 40 feet on the sidewalk level. So coffee at 9.15. Bingo. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very thank much. You. Um. All right. Anybody else from the public? I got two hands up. I'll do Maureen. Okay. First. I just need your name and uh, name and uh, address for the record, Maureen. And you've got three minutes. Okay. Hi. Good evening, Council. Um. Maureen Keelan from Flemington Borough. And I'm um, here tonight for just a couple of things. Uh, one, to ask Malik to do the right thing and resign. I didn't know he was on, but then I just saw him um, a few minutes ago. So there's about uh, last minute, but I'm still gonna keep asking. 
Um, also, Mr. Parker, I wanted to say I was um, very happy with what you had to say, and I back you on all of that. And I'm not sure what you're talking about with the newsletter, but I'd be very interested in getting that. I'm not sure if it's digital or if you're talking about a paper newsletter. Um, but I would also be very interested in, in understanding what's going on in the community. I have a lot of nieces and nephews in here, and I would really lo love to know more. Um, and also, um, what else is there here? I wanted to say that I talked to a family member that is on opposite polar ends of me with politics, and we haven't spoken in a long time. And we had a wonderful conversation, and it gave me such um, we both are looking for the same type of things in life, you know, so the commonality is really important. Um, and I, I'm just really happy uh, to hear people speak up about that. Also, Mr. Long, um, when you were talking about the mental health um, caseworker going with the police calls, I'm very interested in learning about all that, too. I think it's I thought it's a great idea since I first heard about it. So I'm glad you're going to learn about that and then let us know about it. Um, and Ms. Tilly, feel better. You do look like you, you're down with a cold, so feel better. And that's it. Thank you, so thank much. you very much. All right, thank you. Somebody else's hand up, I can't tell yeah. who that is. Robin. Oh, Robin. Robin is who's home sick yeah. as well. It sounds just as bad as Kim. Yeah, so you also it. only have three minutes and then you need to go to bed. I'm, I'll take less than three minutes for sure. Um, sorry, I, I definitely have strep throat. So if you feel sick, go get, get your throat tested, Kim. Um, I just wanted to say that we had a very wonderful, safe, festive, fantastic Halloween series of events from our kids parade to our witches walk and moon market to, um, a business and residential Halloween decorating contest. And then the winners have recently been posted on the Facebook page, but there's no doubt that we are uh, every bit a magical and wonderful Halloween destination. And um, our businesses really appreciated that extra boost of new people coming to town and realizing how wonderful Flemington is if they haven't really been here before. And I just wanted to say that we have events from November 16th through Christmas. We have a lot of holiday markets. We have a holiday shopping trolley. And the day that I really hope we can turn out as many people as possible is um, December 2nd, which is the first Saturday happening of the Hunterdon County Parade. And um, what's so important about this event is that our shops and our restaurants will be open. And, you know, in years past, the event takes place Sunday evening. Most people aren't open. The lights aren't on. So I really want this parade to be as much focused on getting attention to our businesses as possible. I, I think it's really important. So please make that a special day. And I know it already is a special day, but I think it's a special time to invite um, people from outside of the community and people from inside the community to come out and really participate and go into the businesses and say hello. They are really struggling. It's not, the economy is really um, tricky. The stress level in the country is great. And, you know, people, our businesses are kind of suffering. So it would be very nice to have a really, have the, our holiday parade be as much a community day of celebration of our businesses and our main street, which looks beautiful. So that's all. Thank you very much. I want to ask a question, Robin. Uh, what are we doing to, to promote small business Saturday? We we have a series of um, discounts that we usually print, and we take ads. We always mention Black Friday and Shop Small Saturday. We we have Santa as well on Saturday. 
but I'm thinking of we we are having a meeting with our main street retailers um, to ask how we can uh, invite Santa to help them attract more customers. Because you know American Express, and I know that I think it's Visa or somebody they actually give um, rebates back when you small shop small business on small business Saturday. So I know it's a really big deal. It's been it's been done for a few years, and they have, they start they start advertising it with um, card um, members. Like I mean, they started like in October. So it'd just be nice if there's somehow that can be pushed through, and even maybe just let American Express know that, that you're doing it. Because they, you're right. they oh, Tony, you're right. We we normally apply every year to be um, included in their promotions, and uh, many years they'll send us uh, swag and merch to to give away for free. So I will definitely put it on my list to do that tomorrow. That'd be great. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Maureen looks like she has her hand up again. Yeah, but she's pretty instrument. I think she's forgot. Okay, so uh, we've got the consent agenda. I'm sorry, for both two of them, yeah. so approved. I forgot to send it to you somewhere. Okay, I was going to say, I know you just, I thought I saw it. Maybe I didn't. You did. Okay, consent agenda, uh, resolution 2023 191, and resolution 2023. I have a question. I have a question. Does yes. that public comment that was emailed to us need to be read at the yes. meeting during public comment session? I don't, did, did you have to? Does it have to be read? I don't think. I believe it does, doesn't it? It's a public comment. It just doesn't get emailed to council. You have to print it out. Does anybody have a Would you like to read it? I give you permission. I have it here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, here it is. We don't have an address for this person. I'm sorry to make you late. Um, I'm not reading that. Yeah. Um, it, it's come to my attention that Jay Huff and Elliot Franklin, coordinators of the Flemington QTs in person groups and Facebook groups, are anti Semitic and host hostile towards Jewish people. As a gay man and non-Jew, I would like to remind these individuals that not only is Flemington a beautiful, diverse place that does not tolerate hate and discrimination, but the social diversity and multiculturalism has huge social benefits and should remain the goal that we aspire towards in our community. Oops. I respectfully urge the community to encourage the group to seek new coordinators that support the laudable goal. That's what you say? Laudable? Yes. Yeah, read your name. Oh, the record. Got it so small. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Anthony Pierce. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else on? on uh, oh, I read the consent agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? Motion. Is there a second? Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Councilman Parker? Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti? Yes. Councilwoman Inglehart? Yes. Council Vice President Tilly? Yes. President. Yes. We have no public hearings tonight under regular agenda resolution 2023 193 resolution awarding bid to Revax Contracting Corporation for the Bloomfield Avenue Improvement Project in the amount of $274,185.70. Um, that is uh, about $100,000 above the award from the DOT. And I believe uh, Bill's not on there, but I, the last time when this, it failed. No, Bill's on uh, Bill, where, are we, where is the balance of that money being certified from, please? See that? It's coming out of our uh, 2020 capital ordinance that we had for road jobs. Okay. I confirmed that with Rob. That's what uh, we had discussed when we did that spreadsheet. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Um, can I have a motion to uh, approve resolution 2023 193? On a move. Is there a second? 
Julio second. Any discussion? Yes, I have a, a two questions. One's for Bill on the comment that he just made. So the the DOT had as the, had uh, I just want to get clarification, Bill. I'm sorry. The DOT had estimated a three hundred seventy four thousand dollars approximately, and a hundred thousand of that is coming from the was planned in the two twenty twenty capital ordinance. Is that is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the what the detailed and is, is I poor Carla, I made her pull this because I I um I couldn't get it to print and it was a little teeny tiny. Um I wanted to look at the details of the scope of work specifically because um I need some sort of um promise um uh, or or certification or um, confirmation from um, our uh, engineer um, that's doing the inspection work on this that the scope of work includes the DEP required washdowns and dust control for this um, project. The same contractor did the work along New York broad and and blue and a little bit of Bloomfield and the dust control on that project was non-existent. There are DEP regulations for washdowns and dust control and it was not done. I want some sort of confirmation that that scope of work, which should be in every you know uh, 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 spec, is in this spec and more importantly that it will be monitored and controlled. If it's a DEP regulation, it doesn't require being in a spec because it's the law. Then so, we need to make sure that the inspection, the inspecting engineers are keeping them accountable who's, for this. Is, is uh, Rob Martucci the inspector on this? I think he is, right? That's one of his special projects. I think yes. So. Okay, so we'll talk to Rob. All right, I appreciate that. It just it wasn't it's fine. Happening. It has to be in the spec. So. That's fine. I just when it's in the spec, I feel like it's like in writing, and it's like you can point to it out on the field. At least that's my experience. Cool. Okay, we'll follow up on that. Can Thank I have you. a motion? Are we ready to oh, yeah. okay. yes. Council Parker. Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti. Yes. Councilwoman Engelhart. Yes. Council Vice President Tilly? Yes. Council President Holmes? Yes. And next one is Resolution 2023, uh, approving the donation of canine dogs to the police department. I'll ask Councilman uh, Johnson to re recuse himself from this vote and abstain. I have a motion to approve. One move. There's a second. Tilly, I'll second. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> you guys sweat. Welcome, Elsa. <laughs> Welcome, Elsa. Can uh, roll call, please? Uh, Councilman Parker? Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti? Yes. Councilwoman Engelhart? Yes. Council Vice President Tilly? Yes. Yes. Uh, resolution 2023 195 resolution authorizing Flemington Borough uh, of Flemington County to County apply for a grant from the NJDCA for $400,000 to carry out a project to renovate the police headquarters building at 200 Main Street. Um, this project uh, we were allowed to apply for one up to 400,000. Um, and uh, my campion uh, with Bill Hans has written this grant, uh, chose this over the bad bathroom in this building. You guys should be flattered. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, yes. Uh, again, I'm asking Councilman Johnston to recuse himself and abstain from this um, vote. Can I have a motion, please? Long move. Is there a second? Hilly, I'll second. Roll call, please. Uh, Councilman Parker? Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti? Yes. Councilwoman Engelhart? Yes. Council Vice President Tilly? Yes. Yes. Um, Bill, thank you for doing this. Um, the public hearing will be December 6th. It's required uh, at 6 o'clock for this grant. Do you want to say anything about it? How complicated and what a pain in the neck it is? We better get this money for all the work that you and you and uh, Mike put into this. 
it, it's yeah it was mike uh was a big help with that and plus um our architects you know we have to submit uh you know our plans and and estimates and stuff like that so it was a definitely a team effort here <laughs> hopefully gonna, get something out of it our fingers crossed so that these guys can take a shower or something <laughs> <laughs> over there have, flush, have flushable toilets there we might have a leader uh roll call please Oh, I did that right. We did that. I'm sorry. Okay. Ordin okay. So we have a couple of ordinances for introduction tonight. Ordinance 2023-32, an ordinance to establish new key schedules for the plumbing, mechanical, electrical, and fire subcodes as set forth in the code of the borough of Flemington in section 9A-3. New key schedules will be will replace in full the current key schedule. And I have a motion to introduce. Move. For a second. Uh, I'll second. Okay, um, this was this is uh, our our fire marshal the last meeting went over uh, this as well as our construction official about how long it's been since we've updated any of our codes. Um, roll call, please, Councilman Johnston. Yes. Councilman Parker. Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti. Yes. Councilwoman Engelhart. I'm going to abstain. Council Vice President Tilly. Yes. Yes. And the public hearing will be on November 27th. November 27th. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the second ordinance is Ordinance 2023-33 and Ordinance Amending Chapter 33 entitled Miscellaneous Fees to Amend the Fees Applicable to Obtaining Death, Birth, and Marriage Certificates within the Borough of Flemington. Can I have a motion to introduce? Engelhardt, I'll move. Is there a second? Possible second. Okay. Uh, Johnson. Roll call for <laughs> Councilman Johnston? Yes. Councilman Parker? Yes. <clears throat> Councilwoman Rossetti? Yes. Councilwoman Engelhart? Yes. Council Vice President Tilly? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that public hearing will be November 27th as well. Can I ask um, a question on that? Yeah. My lot. Is that where they wanted to raise the fees for the dog license and the pet license too? No, that was done already. Uh, Carlos, yeah, that was, was uh, that, that was, was a lot. Clerk's fees, yeah. Okay, so this is then registrar fees. This is for like certified copies and birth certificates, death certificates. Got you. What we are charging is not on the books, so we got to make everything the same. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, we have the work session, public comment session number two. If you have any comments, please limit your time to three minutes. Okay. Well, I just need your name and your address for the record. Um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, my name is Aiden Minter. Um, oh, can you hang, uh, spell that? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, A I D E N M I N P E R. Okay. okay. Um, I don't live in Flemington. I live in uh, New Brunswick, so I'm a Rutgers student. Okay. Um, so the reason I'm here, I'm taking a public administration class. Uh, we kind of learned about what you guys do. And so you wrote have... to me. Did, Did I? you write to me? I don't think so. It was another Rutgers student, it wasn't you? Okay. Um, but you have to speak at every meeting. I just wanted to kind of say that it was very, very interesting. Uh, I enjoyed myself a lot more than I thought I was going to. <laughs> um, <laughs> why, did you choose, <laughs> why did you choose Flemington? Um, so my hometown, so I grew up in Hillsborough. Um, the only meeting that I found was at 8 30 in the morning, uh, which was odd. Their like scheduling is really weird. You guys are like really straightforward about it. It's a lot easier to find. So I was like, okay, funny marks. Um, but it was very interesting. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna see a dog, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, but I just want to thank you guys like for all the work you do. You guys obviously work hard, you're obviously very passionate about it. Um yeah, yeah, that's all I got. Where did you go from? Uh I grew up right around um there's like the Amsterdam school. Yep, right over there. Yep. Okay. It is incredibly sweet of you to come up here and tell us this. Mm -hmm. Incredibly sweet. You could have sat uh, there and didn't know who you were. A yeah. fellow Rutgers man myself. <laughs> Glad to see that. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for coming. Do you, you need us to certify that you were here? Are you just going to wait for our seven minutes? To... Or you have a YouTube video coming out too? Yeah. yeah. I post the YouTube on uh, tomorrow. Okay, awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. And have a safe drive back to campus because. Dark and there are lots of deer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What about you going to Hills? 
I actually did some graduate. I actually did some graduate work in Rutgers when your food trucks were legal then. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Back in the good old days when the fat sandwich was invented, I'm showing my age. Yes. Um. Okay. So, uh, payment of bills authorizing payment of bills in the amount of four hundred eleven thousand six hundred twenty nine dollars eighty nine cents. Can I have a motion, please? Well moved. Is there a second? Engelhardt, I'll second. Roll call, please. Councilman Johnson. Yeah, yes. 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 Councilwoman Rosetti? Yes. Councilwoman Engelhart? Yes. Council Vice President Tilly? Yes. Council President Long. Yes. Just gonna remind everybody tomorrow's election day. Yeah. Carl's got a eight a three thirty in the morning wake up call. Uh can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. It's not nine thirty, it's eight thirty. Um is there a second to get out of here? Engelhart is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ready? Have a good night, everyone. Thank you all. Good night. Bye.